Hello everybody and welcome to our first tutorial of 2022. I'm Professor Crimsey and in today's class I will teach you how to use the new liquify tool in Clip Studio Paint. This tool has been an awaited feature for quite a while so I'm really excited to show you what it is, how it works and also show you a few scenarios where you can use it. So without further ado, let's begin the ritual. The Liquify tool is a brand new tool that arrived in Clip Studio Paint version 1.11.6, which you can find in the Blend Tools menu next to the Blend Brushes. Essentially, this tool is very powerful because it allows you to quickly modify the position, size and orientation of entire areas of pixels in your art by simply dragging your pen around your image. Alright, so how does the Liquify tool work? As you can see, the Liquify tool has only a few parameters to play with, notably the brush size, the strength and the hardness of the Liquify effect, and the only refer to editing area box, which we will all go over soon, but the most important parameter here is the mode we have selected for our brush. There are seven different modes to choose from, which are push, expand, pinch, push left, push right, twirl clockwise and twirl anti-clockwise. These all produce very different results, so let's go over each of them individually to see what they do. But just before doing that, I should mention that the Liquify tool can only be used on a single layer, mask layer, or a limited selection at once, not an entire folder. So before using this tool, keep in mind to back up your folders and flatten your layers in a single image layer first. First, we have the push mode. This mode is probably the one you will find yourself using the most as it allows you to move areas of pixel smoothly towards the direction of your brush stroke, like so. Note that pushing things around will not make lines or colors blend together. All it does is deform, stretch, or compress pixels towards each other, but it will apply some sort of smoothing effect to the area you went over once you're done with your brush stroke, and this applies to all the other modes as well. Before moving on to the next mode, let's quickly go over the couple settings you can play with to adjust the effect of each liquify mode. Note that every mode is affected the same way by these settings, so I will only be using the push mode for this demonstration. First, we have the strength slider, which increases or reduces the intensity of the liquify effect you're using. The lower the amount and the more soft and subtle the effect will be, and the higher you go and the stronger the effect becomes, to the point of sometimes creating heavy deformation. Next up, we have the hardness setting, which determines the sharpness of the deformation in your brush strokes. For example, a low amount of hardness will make the effect look smooth and organic, but the higher you get and the sharper and rounder the effect will become. And lastly, we have the only refer to editing area box. This option is mostly for isolating areas of your art and modifying them without the outside influence of neighboring pixels. For example, if you check the box and select something, the transformation happening inside will not consider the presence of any pixel outside of the selection. But if you leave the box unchecked, it will keep the influence into consideration when applying the liquify effect. Coming up next, we have the expand mode. This one applies a magnifying glass effect to your art and works by making pixels gradually expand outwards from the center of the brush as you keep applying more pressure or add more brush strokes in your canvas. This last bit of information is important to underline, because unlike the push mode, the expand mode works from the moment you put pressure on your pen and up until that pressure is lifted, meaning the speed of your brush strokes will affect the result of the liquify effect, including if you keep your brush on the same spot and keep applying pressure. Though, you should know that if you keep pressing down too long, you will end up with this trippy looking effect. Following this, we have the pinch mode, which is essentially the opposite of the expand mode. This mode allows you to reduce the size of an area by moving the pixels inwards, towards the center of your brush. You may use it by just holding down the pressure or use brush strokes to get different results, but all in all, it works the same way as the expand mode, except it shrinks things down instead. By the way, now is a good time to mention that by pressing Alt on your keyboard, you can summon the expand mode while in the pinch mode. All modes that have an opposite function work with this shortcut. Next up, we have the push left and push right modes. I combined these two together because they're pretty much twin features and basically what they do is slide vertical strips of pixels to either the left or the right, as opposed to dragging them like the push mode does. These two modes only work when doing vertical brush strokes, like so. Another interesting detail is that if your brush goes from top to bottom, the pixel will slide on the chosen side of the mode you selected. But if you do a bottom to top motion, it will slide it in the opposite direction. So you pretty much have both modes into one, but I suppose they gave us both options because not everyone is comfortable doing down and up as opposed to up and down with their hand, but it's just a guess. Lastly, we have the twirl clockwise and twirl anti-clockwise modes. Again, these two modes can be explained as one because they do pretty much the same thing. What these modes do is create a rotation effect within the area of your brush, which move the pixels in a circular motion in the left or the right direction. 
This mode also works like the expand and pinch mode, so the effect takes place from the moment you hold down the brush, and if you keep applying pressure in the same spot, you will get the same sort of glitchy effect. Alright, that pretty much covers it for the liquify tool and all its features, but if you're still wondering exactly when or for what you should be using this tool, then I really recommend you watching this next part as we will speedrun a bunch of different scenarios where this tool becomes very useful. Starting with... This is the most obvious use for the liquify tool, but that's because every mode of the liquify tool can be used in that scenario. With the push mode you can fix a wonky looking face, with the expand and pinch modes you can adjust the size of a disproportionate element, with the push left and right modes, you can correct the placement or curvature of a bunch of different elements. And lastly, with the twirl modes, you can correct the angle of slightly crooked elements, like eyes, mouths, etc. I highly recommend the liquify tool, if only for those very convenient reasons, but it's far from being the only thing the liquify tool can do. If you like playing around with the facial expressions of your characters, if you create reference sheets, concept art, or in my case these YouTube stills that I've been using for a while, then the liquify tool will make this process even more fun and easy for you. Instead of having to redraw everything all the time, create duplicates of whatever you want to iterate on, like in this case the eyes and mouth of my character, hide the originals and then mess around with the liquify tool to quickly create multiple alternate versions and see what looks best. It's easy to forget that the liquify tool is not limited to only being used on finished artwork, because that's what we see most people online using it for. But the liquify tool can and should be used at any stage of your art creation process. For example, you can easily fix proportion issues early on, like the very common head that's too big or hands and feet that are too small occurrence, using the pinch or the expand modes. Also, on the plus side, since sketches are usually pretty messy, you won't have to really care much about any stretch happening or things getting a bit messier when moving things around. Although I strongly recommend you watching some line art tutorials in order to globally improve the quality of your line art, such as this one made by yours truly, the liquify tool can be good for beginners who need help fixing especially unruly curves and shaky lines. You would be surprised how somewhat salvageable even the shakiest of lines can be. Simply use the push mode with a low strength value and gently move the lines until the bumps are all smoothed out, and that's it. Of course the liquify tool cannot do miracles, but with enough patience you can definitely achieve a lot for messy line art with this tool. This one manga artists will especially love because the only tool we had before to fit patterns onto clothes was the mesh transform tool, at least I think so, which is a great tool for lots of things but it gets highly overshadowed by the liquify tool when it comes to organically fitting a straight pattern onto a curvy surface. Of course, for better results, you should use layer mask to separate the different clothing pieces and adjust them separately, but I think you get the gist. Just use the push tool and adjust the pattern to the curves of your character's clothes and that's it. Another really quick manga related use for the liquify tool is for customizing text and speech bubbles. Simply rasterize your layers and just get creative with it. As shown here, the distortion effects you can create with this tool can make for some very dynamic and dramatic looking text and speech bubbles. This is something probably most people would not consider, but indeed you can use the liquify tool in some instances to create simple animations. I will not go into detail about how to animate in this tip, there are lots of tutorials out there that explain it very well, including this one that I've made that cover keyframe animation more specifically. But to summarize this process quickly, you get your artwork, you open the timeline window, create a new animation timeline, create a new animation folder, put your image layer inside, duplicate it, set the layer copy on the second frame, and start slightly moving the parts of the face you would like to animate. Of course, in this case, it would be better to separate the elements we want to animate from the rest of the face, and also separate the character from the background, but for the sake of this very quick demonstration, I just thought it wouldn't be necessary. Then, once you're happy with the result, press play and there you go! Obviously, this was made in a few minutes and is super simple and a dumbed-down example of how the liquify tool can be used to animate, but I think it shows how much potential this tool has to offer when it comes to animation. While the liquify tool can be great for fixing things, it can also be used for, well, calculated destruction. Because the liquify tool does not blend colors together, it can be really good at just morphing things into twisted and wiggly shapes for some very unique results. For instance, you can use its different modes to create special effects like smoke, fire, and ominous things like ghosts. Anything your mind can think of. Okay, this type of art might not be my forte, but there is no denying the potential use digital artists could make of the liquify tool in this area. 
And just for the sake of it, I created this really trippy abstract artwork by only playing around with the different tool modes and settings on a random color palette picked online. Now, there is a lot you could do with this by only adding color mixing and more brushes and effects to the mix. But to keep it simple, I stuck to only using the liquify tool, and this is the result I got. If anything, it makes for a really fun exercise, so I recommend trying it. Alright, let's end on a memorable one. Because yes, it is bound to happen to anyone playing around with the liquify tool. We all love to go above and beyond, and we end up creating the most cursed art possible. The possibilities are pretty endless here, but among other things, making eyes obscenely big, making mouths creepy as they can be, using the push tool to take proportions to absurd levels, and of course using the twirl mode to add a touch of nonsense to everything. Be it for memes, for YouTube thumbnails, or just for fun to scare away your friends, you will absolutely want to use the liquify tool for this, at least once in your life. Alright, that's enough, that pretty much covers it. Please show the video some love if you found it helpful, join our growing community to support me and get access to more tutorials like this. It's free and it really helps the channel, so do it! But in any case, that's gonna be it for me. I have to go back to my crypt, get some rest. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Au revoir.